Hello, Alexis. Hello. Can you start by uh, introducing yourself? Mm, yeah. So I have a background in photography, uh, starting in 93, 94, uh, skateboarding, snowboarding in Switzerland, mixed with, uh, let's say, art, street art. Mm -hmm. that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right away when I started, I, s I published a zine, which became a magazine. So I was learning the process of editorial, to design, to printing it, and to figuring out that half of it would be destroyed systematically. <laughs> as we tried to be in the newsstands all over France, Switzerland. What was it called? Flat. Flat magazine? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I don't know, it, it didn't really grow old that well. A few issues, are, they have nice things, but it's a bit typical. It's a bit like, it was at the same time Lowdown started, mm -hmm. which, is, um, which is something I'm a bit less interested in nowadays. And then uh, to jump ahead, I, uh, tra I started traveling, so I lived a bit in New York. Not really, but going back and forth, taking pictures. And from 2000, I, I worked for art magazines. And from 2005, I started driving my car around in Switzerland, trying to figure out how you sell those things yourself mm -hmm. to stores. I figured out what's a discount, what's a consignment. Mm -hmm. So your first store right, was your car? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah, I was selling books out of my car on the parking lot in front of Ekar mm -hmm. school and then um, people in Zurich invited me to do like a one-week store and then in 2008 I my partner opened a, her gallery here mm -hmm. and this space was empty and at some point it was kind of urgent to take over because we wanted this courtyard to, mm -hmm. to look nice and we open only one day a week, and um, and that's how motor. And started. then that's how it went pretty fast afterwards. And so today we have about a dozen bookstores with institutions and, and project spaces or design studios, with all of them a different economy and volume of books. Mm -hmm. And we publish books, we publish more than 20 titles this year. Some mm -hmm. of them are co-published, so they are more like distribution deals. And some of them we actually really make and edit. And uh, they are more like objects. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's, that's... And how did you move to distribution then? Well, the thing is, I started first as a distributor, mm -hmm. coming from a publisher. So you were mostly selling to bookshops uh, yeah, I didn't from have the space, beginning. So, yeah, so I was actually like an um, undercover bookseller in uh, Payo, if you know. Mm -hmm. In Lausanne, they, uh, they sort of gave me a carte blanche. I could bring in whatever I wanted mm -hmm. on commission and or like selling and then uh, I would go, they would price it, and mm -hmm. I would go there and install it. Okay. And they had like a big magazine section, but that's like, yeah, 2005, six. And so, from the beginning, you worked sort of as a curator of books, um, making decisions yeah. and selections. Yeah. And so, what area does that cover, um, this curating? Mm. I don't know, it's pretty vast in the, mm -hmm. in the end. I mean, it's all related. Everything is for sale, mm -hmm. sort of, always. Because, yeah, I buy and sell books. Mm -hmm. So uh. that's already a frame, I guess. But then um, I work with several people, uh, with libraries, with uh, actually collectors who become curators like, I don't know, Christophe Schifferli or mm -hmm. Gregory Magnani, where I'm not credited as a curator because I'm not necessarily so interested. Mm -hmm. Or let's say I just don't have time, but they, 
We have a show, for example, now in uh, Porto mm -hmm. that Gregorio curated, and he invited me uh, as part of the project to have in the library a big table with books that he's showing, and uh, as an extension, we curated a, a bookshop mm -hmm. which mirrors what's in the show, and so we we shared. It is actually really curated because we shared all the lists and mm -hmm. and almost everything that goes in. And and what can you what can we find in in Moto Bookshop? Like, what are the interests of uh, Moto? Mm, art books. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But design books. also, fashion sometimes. Very little fashion, actually. I, yeah. I have looked at numbers and I discarded all the coffee table mm -hmm. magazines. And I have realized in the last three years, if you look at this wall there, mm -hmm. there isn't almost any fashion anymore. And okay. they, they man managed to maintain the numbers. Okay. They, they didn't go down because obviously what we sell now is much more commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the stuff, this fashion stuff has a much wider and easy audience. Mm -hmm. And this stuff we sell now is much more difficult, I was going to say. And so, you sell a lot of self-published work? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm, I don't know how far interested I am mm -hmm. in this with defending this because I don't really mind if the book is made in the kitchen or if it's a mm -hmm. mass production paperback as long as it's good and mm -hmm. it's good. Of course, uh, working directly with the artists, it's more complicated, but when it works, it really works because you work directly with somebody and you know, they also sometimes even say, Thank you. <laughs> you know, and if you work with a big distribution with other books with uh, bigger presses, then it's just all automated and mm. it's just trade. So you also have nice people, but mm -hmm. it's it's a bit more anonymous. And, and so you said you started in 2005. That's about the same time the New York Art Book Fair was created, and there has been a. Yes, I think it's not to be compared. From 2005 to 10, 11, it's just me. Mm -hmm. And now it's uh, like a much bigger network. Mm -hmm. And how do you characterize uh, the recent uh, rise in, in publishing? There, there's more and more bo uh, book fairs and, and bookshops uh, and, yeah, and small no, imprints. I don't think I really the book fairs, there are too many, and I. I don't know how interesting they are. It's of course interesting to meet people and and uh, browse some books, but um, it's more interesting to work specifically with people and try to work long, long term. I mm -hmm. think. Which is why also doing these bookshops when it works, it's. Uh, It's just not a book fair and you do a sale and this and mm. it's, it depends I guess, but the only book fair that works is New York, all the other ones you don't sell enough, so for me it's not, mm. it's not, if I just go there to try to break even, it's not, mm -hmm. it, does, it doesn't make sense, I don't really have time to do it, so mm. it's, it, it's not, yeah. It still it seems as though uh, new people are coming in, but some some people already sort of gave up, or mm -hmm. they tried to make ten books a year and they only make one, and they don't come to the book fairs and so on. So I don't know if they they became DJs or <laughs> <laughs> they started working on on, on something yes. else. Yeah. And then. Um, Just be behind you are the zine boxes uh, uh -huh. um, that you have. I, I guess that artists came and just dropped them. Can you tell us about them and how? Yeah, yeah we, tr we tend to be quite inclusive. So when somebody walks in, we 
just say yes and we take five copies and uh, mostly it's consignment unless somebody's traveling from overseas and uh, mm. we have a bit of cash so we, we can just get it on the spot and it's not much it's easier. Uh, it's a funny economy because also I think some people just never come back or mm. they just don't care because yeah, it's a pretty suicidal economy. <laughs> In a way, if you try to really be a bit rational, and uh, we don't, I don't use any interns at all. So uh, it, you have to really have numbers mm -hmm. to come through. So, what is the societal economy? The zines the or zines, the book in general? You get general? something in. It's only five copies, and there is fifty total. You know, you most likely you will never restock it, but you're still indexing it. Mm -hmm. in your database because you know you have to know how many you sold mm -hmm. uh, you have to deal with the artists uh, making invoices half of them don't know or never done it or, you know. mm -hmm. and is it important for you since you said you started uh, by making a zine to to have those well i think uh, in berlin i didn't really think about it, but I also had to define a position because there's really quite a few bookshops and there is uh, Walter Koenig, of course, and then there is uh, other bookshops who all have their position. Right next door is B-Books, who is like more German theory, uh, politics, etc. So it wouldn't make sense to have the same books and with time, uh, yeah, as I like more hybrids and, and uh, strange things, it would it make sense to have all of these strange things all in the same place. And that's why people come here, because we are not on the streets, which is... In the beginning it was quite a question mark to know if we could maintain the store like this and now it's actually an advantage mm -hmm. except for the guy who stole my laptop on Saturday night. so it was in the, in the back of the shop yeah. wow <laughs> mm. yeah that's the problem of working moment. in somehow a public space yeah. <laughs> people come in and out and yeah yeah and uh, so you you said you started as a photographer as an artist how did you move to being a businessman I don't think there's much difference with the attitude uh, between some of the artists I work with and mine. Mm -hmm. you know, um, because the artists have to be businessmen nowadays, okay. so I think everything merges and you can do, you can do still, um, you can do things many ways and Mm -hmm. It's not anymore. You don't need to define it. So sorry. Yeah. It's not like I'm strictly an artist, mm -hmm. or I'm strictly a curator, or I'm strictly a business or this. I think everybody's since the curator replaced the art critique. Mm -hmm. Things changed because the curators have to act like artists as well. Mm -hmm. They have to act like businessmen. They have to, but museum directors have to find money as well, so everybody becomes a businessman. Mm -hmm. In a way, so yes, this, this border is, yeah, it's interesting to cross the borders, I would say. And would you say there's a, a style of a bit that is common somehow between all the publications that we can find uh, at Moto? The style, yeah. Mm. I think there's many styles, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because we have editions or things that are signed and numbered that are expensive and stuff that's super easily produced and that uh, you could compare to Rocher's books and um, of course, I have a personal archive, and uh, within the economy of the zines and all these small things, if you don't put aside 
a few of them and sell them later, that's mm -hmm. when it becomes really suicidal. Mm -hmm. If you just sell stuff for five euros and make one euro, mm. it's that you have to really sell a lot, then you end up with millions of transactions and uh, you have all the, the hidden costs keep growing. So mm -hmm. it's good to find a balance with, uh, with, with doing that or like selling, I don't know, full sets or. Mm. Like oh, I, yeah. You know. So you also I have collections curate selections yeah. for institutions yeah. that you will yeah. sell a, as a set. Yeah. Okay. And um, <coughs> when I, if I ask you about zines by made by artists, yeah. are, are there a, a couple of names that would pop into your head? Well, uh, Simon Popper that mm -hmm. we just saw. We just had the Popper. show. Uh, this weekend I bought books from Sarah McKillop mm -hmm. or Dan Mitchell mm -hmm. or um, mm, yeah I mean there's quite quite a few but some of them are in between as well like Josh Smith mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it looks zingy but it's still it could pro produce a thousand copies mm -hmm. the attitude towards it is still the same um, I mean the 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 series from the leaves from the zines. I think it's really mm -hmm. and then it's really quite interesting. Even if it's always it's very the same format in this, it still works. If when you do it for so long, it's still quite consistent. But it's it's also easily repetitive. Mm -hmm. When it's all black and white, it's always stable, always the same. So I don't know, like uh, yeah, somebody like Hima, mm -hmm. for example. I think uh, he shouldn't hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I recently started changing his formats, and I thought this was good because of his style, which is always the same. If he would always make those zines. Mm -hmm. I was kind of happy that he stopped. Yeah, and that of. he started making He's objects making, and making objects and stuff. I think it's it stays more within like a performance status, which is mm -hmm. something you could use to frame what is in here. Mm -hmm. In a way. And you you talked about Nevis. Uh, is there and. That I have this question that is very, really bothering me. I, is it still zines if it's not produced by the artist or self-published or? Yeah, I don't. I don't really mind. Yeah, you don't see a difference. No, I think as long as the book is is good, I don't mind mm -hmm. if it has an ISBN, if it hasn't, mm -hmm. if it's. Uh, I could also find it problematic on the other way around when, uh, for example, I had a few things here uh, that are made like very crafty with posters and mm -hmm. so on, you're gonna guess who that is, but I'm not gonna say who it is, mm -hmm. with many artists and then the guy decided that he numbers it and signs it himself, but he's in fact the mm -hmm. editor. Mm -hmm. And it, and this I found a bit problematic because mm -hmm. it's a bit like signing other people's work. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, if you saw the poster from Brian Kenan, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, where he asked he asked somebody to design a poster for him, mm -hmm. saying authorship is fluid, <laughs> but it's still a work of his. But it says designed by Jean Pascal Flavien. Okay. And uh, it was funny because even between them at the beginning, it wasn't clear if mm -hmm. it's him publishing a poster for Flavien or in the end he said, no, 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 it's mine, I'm going to sign it, but you're designing it for mm -hmm. me. So mm -hmm. this, I think this is again interesting. And uh, it's, I think it just matters what the book triggers. Mm -hmm. And the... Then the idea of the, the, the artist himself making a zine, sure, I agree, but mm. I also it's agree, I mean, when Starbucks and uh, uh, Urban Outfitters will start making zines, then, um, yeah. you know, that's going to be something else, but... It might become a problem. Until then, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, 
I don't really mind so much. Then what makes a good book for you? Uh, just content mm -hmm. versus craft, mm -hmm. including design, but when the designer is too, is too much there, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. Something more or less, I think, um, I would say 70% of what we stock, I would buy myself. Mm -hmm. So that's also a criteria, that's also pro probably, and I also verified it in the long term, okay. in the sense that if I don't really like it, that's why it's got a fashion. I wasn't really convinced, so you have one guy walking in, and I sell rare fashion magazines. Like mm -hmm. where, early issues, whatever, for, okay. for a lot, but that's just to feed the machine, but it's not something that is, is um, our facility, let's say. Okay. And, and I feel totally okay doing that because it's not that I only do that. And that's a new trend as mm -hmm. well, where people are a little clever and they want some extra mm. pocket money and they all you need is an Instagram account and you buy Instead of buying one, you always buy two, and you wait two or three years, and then mm. you can just put it. You, it's you open a PayPal account, and mm. I think there's a lot. It's a lot of. It's the new form of mail order. Okay. So yeah. It's still there, but it's just instant. Yeah. And one last question: Can you tell us about the cat? Mm. No. No. <laughs> the cat is there. It's, she's as old as the shop, and. Uh, she she's in every in every style magazine. <laughs> she's famous. <laughs> yeah, she she had a photo shoot. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Some nice. people came three days to take pictures of her. Which was I don't know. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. Should <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.